<clears throat> Hello, this is Pastor Lane on a special broadcast here on the Cyber Bible Gospel Network. I'm going to adjust things here. Whoops. So, uh, I'm getting ready. I have to get the sound right and everything. And making sure that uh, you're, you're seeing what you're supposed to be seeing here. And uh, welcome to the Church of the Church of Phil Church at Philadelphia in the Book of Revelations. Uh, the reason why I named the church this for two reasons: I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Big deal. So what does that have to do anything? Well, first of all, William Penn asked God in six, about 1688 to name Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, after the Church at Philadelphia in the Book of Revelation. So. Uh, that is why, for those two reasons, I have decided to uh, pick the name of the church in this way. And I am an ordained minister. I've been ordained since February 14th, 2006. Um, I received my uh, Justice of the Peace marriage license, license to marry people in March of 2006. So it's a, my great pleasure privilege to um, have those titles and I have a Masters of Divinity at the Cincinnati Bible uh, College and Seminary it's now known as Cincinnati Christian Church but still Cincinnati Bible Seminary and uh, I'm honored to have uh, learned to have uh, been taught under uh, such great professors who have gone to some tremendous universities I don't think I'll ever <laughs> get a chance to go to but we'll see what God Almighty says okay uh, today we have a discussion of why Jesus is God and uh, we might as well start to pray and ask God's will in Jesus name what he wants to uh, I want you to take out of this plus plus I have a special sermon on top of this Ephesians 6 12 in the King James Version so keep that in mind I'll read it for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places so, I'm excited to talk about that with you here today on the Cyber Bible Gospel Network. We better pray right now, because in about less than two minutes, one minute, uh, we will be starting a sermon. And I want you to take away what God wants you to take away, and not what Pastor Lane wants you to take away from Pastor Lane. Yeah, though... Don't get, what I'm trying to say is get ask God's will in daily and ask God's will in Jesus name and <clears throat> what he wants you to, to to get out of it and he will by faith because that's the only thing that the only way man can please God is by faith to trust God that he will guide you Father God we pray as a church in the name of Jesus uh, that you what 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 do you want us to get out of this sermon uh, please uh, bless those I, who I'm speaking to please bless us all uh, this will be a learning experience for me as well in Jesus holy name amen okay here we go um, we are at 11 o'clock <clears throat> now um, Jesus Christ well a man yet uh, God on earth. Uh, this is what I, I, I claim. 100% man, 100% God, and I back that with uh, witnesses of two or more uh, who are in this case, which are in this case, um, scripture passages and scripture. So let's go and, um, and now, now that uh, uh, hopefully you are a child of God, uh, one needs to know um, our joint heir to God, Jesus Christ personally. Jesus is 100% deity and 100% humanity. Some examples of Christ's deity are his superiority above and over the angels and the declaration of Jesus as the creator 
unchangeable, eternal, and righteous. Jesus is superior above the angels because Hebrews 1, 4 through 5 verifies this because it states that Jesus inherited a more excellent name than they and that he is begotten of God and therefore there is a father son relationship. Jesus, even when in a human man's body, was a little lower than angels, yet God, as a perfect man, God, uh, uh, came to be, uh, um, God, uh, uh, he was, um, he was able to be, um, Um, he was he was able to be man uh, in, in the first place. Uh, one the way God the image of God that God wanted to man to be, and it, only, it took God to do that. Uh, the verification of Jesus Christ as Creator, unchangeable, eternal, and righteous, are in Hebrews one verses uh, ten, nine, eight, and. Uh, uh, I know I got this a little bit in order, and nine, respectively. Uh, other evidence, you know, I'll say that again. Uh, the verification of Jesus as creator, unchangeable, eternal, and righteous, are in Hebrews 1, verses 10, uh, 9, 8, and 9, respectively. I don't know why I have nine repeated there, but you've got the, you'll get, you look at those verses, and you have the, perspective that you're supposed to have about Jesus as the creator. Uh, other evidence of Jesus' deity is that he can reveal God, is declared God, declared Lord, and is one with the Father in terms of revelation, according to, uh, revelation of God, according to um, Hebrews um, 1, 3, Jesus is God expressed image uh, the will person uh, uh, brightness of glory um, upholder of all things by the word of his power let's see I'm gonna get that uh, make sure here okay and was well and was able to purge sins and finally, Jesus seats himself at the right hand of the majesty on high. Uh, no man can do that by himself. Deuteronomy 15, uh, 19, obviously requires two or three witnesses, I said earlier, to a sin. But in this case, it is not for iniquity or sin, but for a testimony of the deity power of Jesus Christ. And there is obviously an Abundance of witness Jesus uh, deity power in Scripture. For example, Matthew eight three, Matthew eight three, and Matthew six eight three. Excuse me. Uh, also, verse six, verse ten, uh, verse sixteen through seventeen, uh, verse twenty three through twenty seven, John eleven thirty nine through forty four. Matthew sixteen thirteen through 16 gives Jesus deity power testimony. So let's look at that, for, uh, the, those examples. Matthew, um, I repeat it again. Um, Matthew 8, Matthew 8, verse 3, 6. Uh, and that's weird. Yes. Uh, 6, 10, and... Uh, verses 16 through 17, verses 23 through 7, John 11, uh, 39 uh, through 44, Matthew 16, 13 through 16. Gives Jesus the deity power of testimony. So that I, I think that's very, very important. But the power of deity was one available and originally intended for man. Now, this is kind of tough for, for a lot of people. But because of man's lack of faith, uh, uh, lack of faith, excuse me, I'll write that down. <laughs> Jesus performed such powers 
of faith flawlessly that he could um, but, uh, do all things by um, God the Father. Okay, uh, Hebrews 2, uh, verse 7. Prophecies from the Old Testament, also known as the Tanakh, clearly are our scriptures and scripture passage worthy to verify the 100% deity power and fulfillment of Jesus Christ as 100% man, God, uh, in a lower God in a lower in a lower uh, state than angels, perfect man. So uh, I know there's a lot uh, uh, to say there, but that's true. Um, now, uh, let's go down further. Let, let's look at these, uh, that I had just, uh, talked about, uh, Matt, well, let's look at the, the, the following here, uh, that, that's a bit very, very catching here. Matthew 14, uh, 27, but straightway Jesus spoke unto them saying, be of good cheer. It is I be not afraid. And Peter answered and said to him, Lord, if it be thou, if it be you, bid me come unto thee, unto the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Lord, got that? Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O oh, thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Did you doubt? And uh, see, um, right there, uh, that's where man's failure, all men. That's why they can't do things uh, by themselves uh, in faith, not without Jesus. Uh, now, now, Jesus goes... Uh, 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 I want to look at some other verses that Jesus discusses. Uh, let's go up there. Go up there. Uh, now, in Matthew 17, uh, 19 through 21, uh, that and King James, uh, I'm the only one I can quote without uh, getting copyright laws slapped against me. Believe me, they told me that I couldn't use other versions because they have all have copyright laws so this is the legitimate one I can discuss and they can't stop me uh, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said why could we not cast him out now, there is a situation uh, where uh, they they were they didn't understand why they couldn't cast out this demon and Jesus said um, because your unbelief your lack of faith for verily I say unto you, if ye had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, uh, ye shall say it to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible for you. Howbeit, this kind goeth out, but by prayer and fasting. Although he was always God, even on earth, Jesus uh, purpose was to give an image or will of God what perfect man is uh, and so uh, of what is perfect man I should say uh, so I know I'd get killed in, in grammar if I did for, pronounce giving this to my professors do not misunderstand me when I um, uh, communicate by interpretation that the son of God anointed uh, the image title uh, man was supposed to be according to what man should be imaged uh, willed by God and and that's what Peter meant when he told Jesus he was uh, the Messiah um, the Son of God and that is why the church's foundation on earth is so we can imitate a perfect man God demand the perfect man God demanded in the beginning and and be um, called children of God the most high uh, God the most high but um, not begotten but by 
adoption thanks to Jesus and the Father who willed it in force by the Holy Spirit. So that's very important to remember, adoption there. Jesus was, Jesus the perfect man uh, expressed the faith power man uh, was supposed to fulfill had man had the image, the will of God, and had in the first place in Matthew 8, 3, by cleansing the person uh, 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 with leprosy. But uh, Matthew 8, uh, uh, verse 16, uh, 13, the same fulfilled uh, of fulfillment of faith by um, Jesus healing a person with palsy by faith of a man who, who who used Jesus without sin to make his uh, faith uh, complete. Uh, but notice, uh, just by Jesus' words being the man in God's perfect image, uh, perfect will at the moment of moment healed of palsy. It's see he had tremendous faith flawless faith no sin, no doubts whatsoever that he was going to accomplish uh, getting this palsy uh, healed of, of this man so by his words Jesus in perfect faith was what God intended man to express in completeness he cast out all demons he encountered in Matthew 8 16 through 17 but just his words Ow. Ah, uh, power there in the words. Uh, definitely by Jesus. <laughs> uh, and again, by his words in faith, Jesus, uh, perfect, uh, which takes God himself to fulfill uh, because no sin was in him, uh, uh, calms the, uh, in, in Matthew uh, 16, verses 23 through 27 the sea uh, respectively uh, is the separately or individuality and uh, in order uh, separate separately or individually and in the order already mentioned used when enumerating two or more items or facts that refers back to a previous statement they they received uh, I'm just giving you uh, respectively so that you know, don't get confused. To a previous statement, they receive, uh, for example, they receive sentences of one year, eight months, respectively. See, um, just trying to give you the definition of respectively there. I should have made a footnote there, but footnote there, and uh, um, but I didn't, so I'll have to work on that. Um, disregard that verse. Uh, that's just an extra for what respectively is applied to uh, in a sentence. So in terms of prophecies about Jesus, respect. Oh, I guess I'm going. Oh, I put the. I define it before I uh, present uh, the statement I'm going to make about respectively. So, in terms of prophecies about Jesus, respectively, will be used below. Uh, some prophecies and fulfillments of Jesus in the Tanakh or the Old Testament along with the New Testament uh, of the Bible, respectively, are places of birth, place of birth, rather, Micah 5, 2, and Matthew 2, verse 1, respectively. There you go, the respectively. Uh, the virgin birth, Isaiah 7, 14, and Matthew 8, 1, 18, respectively. Jesus' triumphal entry, into Jerusalem, Zechariah 9, 9, and John 12, 13, verses 13 through 14. The betrayal by a friend, uh, Psalms 41, verse 9, and Mark 14, 10, respectively. The rejection of Jesus, Isaiah 53, 12, and John 1, 11, respectively. Jesus crucified with sinners, um, Isaiah 53, Isaiah, verse 12, and Matthew uh, 27 38 so the hands um, the hands and feet of the Messiah uh, it's 
uh, pierced. Uh, Psalms 22, verse 16. Uh, and, uh, and John 20, 27, respectively. Now, in the Masoretic text, it was written after the death of Christ. In A.D., Animo Domini, people call it C.E. or something like that. I like A.D. And I will continue to use A.D. after the death of Jesus Christ. Uh, the, a later version of the, called the Masoretic text, kind of confused uh, that verse, didn't like uh, uh, to change the wording around to, to kind of keep referring it to Jesus in uh, John 20 through 27. So you got to be careful. Uh, Psalm 16 verse 10 and Acts uh, 3 15 respectively um, uh, the resurrection of Jesus. And we in Psalms 68 18 and Acts 1 9 we have the ascension of Jesus shown clearly. So Right there, we've got prophecies just backing Jesus up. One, two, three of who he is uh, by way of prophecy. Finally, on the chapter we focus on Jesus while uh, human in a human body, 100% God and as well as 100% um, man. And I, um, uh, and I, um, I don't know why that wasn't, uh, uh, and 100% God expressed in his uh, humanity in John 4, 6 through 7, and John 11, uh, 36, uh, through temptation, uh, temptations we often face, and how to fight uh, uh, in, uh, oh, how to fight it in Matthew 4, uh, verse 1 through 11, Deuteronomy uh, 6, 13, Deuteronomy 6, 16, and Deuteronomy 8, 3. Experience that is common to man and Jesus in Hebrews 2, verse 10. Uh, why Jesus was not ashamed to be called, uh, to call his uh, believers brethren in, in Hebrews 2, 11. Uh, results of Jesus as a man in Hebrews 2, 14 through 15. And, and... Consid con con concluding thoughts regarding Jesus as God and, and human on earth while a man. Let's look at the following environments which shows Jesus' humanity in John 4, 6 through 7, and John 11, verse 35. Now John 4, verse uh, 6 and 7 are our, our basic human needs, weariness and thirst, respectively. Uh, John eleven thirty five 35 shows Jesus expressing humanity called weeping. Jesus wept. Um, finally, in this chapter, we, fo we just focus uh, uh, in, in, in here, we, we focus while in a human body, 100% man as well as 100% God, uh, expressed his humanity in John 4, uh, 6 through 7, John 11, verse 36, through temptation. I just read that. What am I doing here? I must have uh, repeated it accidentally, and uh, I wanted to give you those notes. There we go. The human experience regarding temptation was the passage of Matthew 4, 11, and uh, it repeats three exact phrases that are meanings how this passage corresponds with Deuteronomy 6 13 16 and Deuteronomy 8 3 temptations one might often face on how to counter them Hebrews 2 10 Hebrews 2 11 and results showing Jesus uh, becoming a man now uh, Uh, now there were things that Jesus performed as a man yet fully God because it, only, it took God to do the image of what man should be to perform these miracles and, and in the faith that faith it shows the flawlessness no doubts Jesus is God uh, you go to John 1 1 in the beginning was the word word was with God 
the word was God. Unfortunately, in the New World Translation by the Jehovah's Witness, they say a God. And the person who wrote the Greek uh, back in, I believe, 1971, uh, went to court in Brooklyn, U.S. court, I believe it was a district court, or something like that, and they argued uh, back and forth, and the Jehovah's Witness won to keep it a God in the name of freedom of religion instead of objectivity, which, of course, secular courts don't understand. What a mess, but that's what uh, happened, and uh, so they've kept it that way. <laughs> um, I, I, I hope that we got an idea, or you have an idea, about Jesus as being God. Um, uh, Jesus also said, before Abraham was, I am, in the New Testament. That's Jesus himself. But Jesus' goal was not to consider himself equal with God, but be the image of man God wanted man to be. So he was already God. So he was that in that term, it's a little bit lower than angels because what happened was man, through the first Adam, turned away from God by disobeying, not doing his will, but his own will, which is a big no-no. That's, that's, uh, so now the second Adam, Jesus Christ, comes to redeem and make, the image of God man is supposed to be in the first place. Huh. Wow. But thank thank you, Jesus, for doing that. I thank him for willing to do what the Father wanted him to do. So I, I just give kudos. I can't even thank him enough. None of my works can thank him. I, well, yes, I can. But none of my works can ever meet the glory justification. Only Jesus. And it's because of him that by grace, my works are something, as well as all believers who do it, do uh, uh, seek to do the way of Jesus in their life with gift or gifts. Okay, so I hope that I've helped you out a little bit. I, I know I went fast on the on the verses and the, and the chapters, but you can rewind it'll be on youtube so not to worry you can check me out uh i'm not i i i i've got i just really wanted to hone accurately with scripture so that i will not i would not deviate from what god wanted to impart to you so again praying before you study things like this so so important okay so uh, I hope that this has been a valuable time for you. Um, I, I hope that that it, it, it can continue with you. I'd like to tell you a brief summary about uh, how believers, oh, brief summary about believers where the Holy Spirit resides and what He provides. Uh, I like I have that written up, and some of those things that that I show where the Holy Spirit and the following. Um, uh, where uh, every believer since Pentecost has had or is presently a while on earth in them the Holy Spirit and the following scriptures and scripture passages apply it's um, Acts 1 9 through 11 John 14 1 through 3 Ephesians 1 20 through 23 Romans 8 34 uh, John 17 13 and 15 17 21 24 they're all verses to John 17. Hebrews 7 verses 24 through 25 and John 14 through 16 and verse 26 and 1 Corinthians 12 to Romans 8 9 1 Corinthians 2 12 1 Corinthians 3 16 and Titus 3 5 5 through 6 Galatians 4 uh, verse 6 and I uh, 2 Timothy 1 seven the conclusions uh, and uh, Galatians 5 16 through 11 uh, John 16 13 through 4 Ephesians 6 17 and Hebrews 4 12 Romans 8 26 Acts 2 verse 42 Acts 1 verse 8 and Acts 4 31 through 33 
So uh, before a believer in Jesus could have the Holy Spirit dwell in them, Jesus had to leave the earth and, uh, pre and present himself before God the Father, even today on behalf of believers in him in heaven. So I just gave you a little gist of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to have a whole uh, book discussion on the Holy Spirit, how how to mess, manifest. And, and I, I want to also discuss the word manifest. I found that there's one Hebrew word for manifest, and then there's several manifest definitions in the Greek. And my assumption is, is, and I hope I'm right, so don't take this as, you know, do research on it. You can use vines uh, and research with words, or you can strong concordance, blueletterbible.org or .com, I think. Either or. <laughs> I would think it's org, organization. Because uh, they're charity. I uh, would appreciate them too. Bible Gateway. Um, it's it's very it it it's fantastic. I want I want. I, I what I what I was saying is I, I believe all the Greek words for manifest go to that one Hebrew word in the Tanakh or Old Testament. So we'll we'll look at that sometime. Okay, I have something else I want to talk to you about. And I do appreciate you uh, stopping by. I, I'm very grateful to you. Um, I want to talk about Ephesians 6, verse 12. I didn't originally schedule to discuss this, but some things have, co have come up, which I can't stress this early enough. In regards to November um, 2012 elections. So I'm going to read Ephesians 6.12 in the King James Version. You can use your version, whatever you want. And where I'm going to read this. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. Recently on my Facebook, I have a friend who I used to be a business partner in a, in a great company, and I still think it's a, I still have a life lifelong uh, attachment to this company, but I haven't made any money since, jeez, oh, 2000. Seven, maybe. Uh, maybe get checks sent to me for um, purchasing items through that company. But I still think it's a fine company. It can work if there are people who have faith to do it the right way. And one of the problems is uh, people got cancer, and so the chain of of training was was lost and, and my mentor uh, fled and went to another company so I was stuck with a skeletal crew and I've tried to uh, fix it but uh, some of the skeletal crew are not willing and then they preferred my mentor oh well just one of those things to chalk up on but I'm still grateful I still use it to purchase things I was able to get some plants uh, wholesale and use it for my business to say see because I'm connected to a company that is just as big as a Hertz company I'm at a, a, on a corporate level um, because I can use it as a testimony for business it, I can get it wholesale because I can I'm showing them the perks of the company and being one that is a um, buys the premium or whatever and I'm not going to talk about that the company because I'd get in trouble so but uh, there's a lot of things that um, that I could have that I could have done but unfortunately God closed that door and through some nasty individuals too uh, who I tried to help but anyways uh, not not all of them oh someone just didn't want to and that's fine 
some of them just went a little bit too far in their declaration. Okay, um, elections. I am not going to focus on parties, okay? But regarding the person in Facebook who discussed this situation with me, he said a statement that he if he he wished that he could go out and kill all the sick people because his voter ideals were diametrically opposed to these people who thought the opposite. And I think that was totally out of line. And although it was in joking form, uh, these days, I wouldn't even joke about that. That's just like talking about, you know, an ethnic joke, which leads to hard feelings and fights and maybe even war. Um, don't go there. So, and the, the, whoever you're talking about, they were fearfully and wonderfully made by the Lord too. And they may be wrong in their doctrine. Okay? And that's what you should be focusing on. Is the principle, are, is, is what the person is saying that they want to do in public office objective and accurate according to what God desires you to vote. Now, I know separation of church and state. Well, I'm not focusing, uh, it, you know, it says pray concerning all things. And so to that aspiration, or I hope that's the right, let's make sure, <laughs> To that goal in mind, how's that? To that goal in mind, I don't care what any government says on that. I care what God says. Um, it is a shame that governments have kicked God out of their guidance. And But God is not to be mocked. And his hand is slowly withdrawing because of the disrespect of leaders in the world who show uh, evil toward him and I say that not to condemn because we're condemned already according to John 3 17 through 18 but to provide a way of escape sometimes this is the way you have to talk to such individuals because they don't know any other language that will penetrate but um and sometimes people can talk light and 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 uh, oh i don't know uh vibes you know have that charisma you know uh soft you don't have to be you don't have to be yelling or anything well you know that's up to the holy spirit i'd like to be pleasant but I like to make sure the point gets across. But even if my, arr, arr, it's really the spirit that does all the work that will speak to your heart as to accomplish hearing that you don't attack flesh and blood, but powers of darkness, rulers of, the, of this dark world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, that pertains to the devil and his entities, his demons, his principalities, his powers. You need to come against that for the sake of the lost and that they'll know we are Christians by our love so that they may worship the Father of uh, uh, in heaven as we do. Isn't that neat? By our actions, as well as our words, we will cause. But never, you know, actions alone don't do it. You have to have faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And that is that God sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins and rose 
on the third day in the flesh, in a new body, I should say, which is um, incorruptible. And so when we go through Jesus, by grace, through adoption, uh, when you ask God to forgive our sins in Jesus' name, we will die in corruption and rise incorruptible, and we shall uh, be as he in that in the sense. And how far I go with that, always according to Jesus. Always. Um, so, I I really hear from both sides. Uh, who is? Uh, let's get take these six people, sick people, and and go out and beat them, uh, beat them to death or something like that. It's not just coming from uh, the right; it's also coming from the left, and maybe even in the center. Okay, um, this is a terrible, uh, terrible attitude, and one is danger of hell for thinking such things of his. Uh, fellow man and uh, and woman too so uh, we must be careful of that and please this uh, uh, and I, I agree with a, a congressman I, I listened to the other day we have had officials in the past and you know they come and go and Oh, it didn't matter what party, as long as they represented truth, and they were going to be the best person to accomplish the mission and the job we elected them to be in. This November 2012 will be the most important election in the United in the history of the United States. Our freedoms are at stake. And so you must carefully choose what candidate will keep the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence alive and by guidance of the Holy Spirit. Now, you think this is limited to just United States Christians. I say no. I urge Christians everywhere in the world on November, in November, the first Tuesday in November, to pray for our nation, the United States of America, because this will be the most, this is going to determine America's direction for quite some time. It's going to affect all our descendants, all of them. Um, we don't need to have attitudes of, well, you should live in an apartment, and I, sh you know, or people should who own ha own property should only vote, and all that stuff. That's silly. Or, uh, I am. Um, I'm going to do uh, welfare because uh, I can still vote and have privilege. Uh, I'm not going to live. I'm not going to work. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to relax. Ha, ha, ha. Doesn't matter what side you're on, is, does it? There's none righteous. No, not one. And we have to rely on Jesus to make sure that the dark side of us never uh, is in control of us. I remember hearing on the radio on Family Talk of a gentleman who was, I believe, was a minister who had cerebral palsy. And this is a very true statement that he made and we should have in metaphor terms when we decide the destiny of the United States as well as 
the welfare of the nation Israel as well as all nations and this is it he said that he palsy did not have a hold on him he had a hold on the palsy and in this case for America I pray that you have a hold on the evil that could come forth from our government and uh, instead of the evil that would come uh, after election that would come forth and have a hold on you for the rest of your days your children your grandchildren and children's children I don't have a family I am single but I still care about the future some people stereotype to uh, you know you've heard that evil can live in extremes whether you're on the right or whether you're on the left or in the middle and if you adhere to such things there Satan is so to avoid such catastrophes such chaos let us proceed forward with God 100% in our citizenship in the United States and our citizenship wherever we are in the world because you who are in the world who are believers we need your prayers desperately I beg you to be praying for us that right decisions will come out now many are called few are chosen and I don't want to say oh well what is to be is to be no I want every effort to be made and no matter what the sovereignty of what God wants to happen after this election may not be what you may not be what you expect to come out because God has a timeline so give thanks no matter what happens after this important US election to God so that joy even if it's suffering that develops just is unspeakable and going forth testifying to all they will know we are Christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are Christians by our love so pray let's pray right now for our nation the United States and hopefully and hope hope that the sovereign will of God Almighty is continuing desiring an extension of what the foundation of this country is supposed to be going forth so it may not go that route everybody thinks it's a be it is a very it is the most important uh, thing in the election but I want to prep you that if it doesn't work out don't be discouraged don't be discouraged continue on even to the point of death hold on to that crown okay we don't know everybody thinks that's the be all be all end of the story no it's not no matter what the election will do we continue on the church continues on no matter what until the rapture and then the 144,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel will come forth I believe we're very close to the rapture I believe it's very very close but have the attitude of just going on standard looking up looking up in hope you know this is all temporary 
the communists marched by, Nazism marched by, Fascism marches by, Progressivism eventually will march by. And all there is left is God and God alone. And my friend, I hope at that time, when it's clearly shown with the eyes who Jesus really is, you already, by faith, have him in your heart. Because when that happens, it is a point of no return. Now is the time of salvation. No matter who you are, whether you're independent, Republican, Democrat, um, I hope you're not a communist, but uh, you're welcome to come as you are and get the right perspective of what is freedom in the spirit and what really matters of a declaration of independence and freedom really is. We have to ask for that wisdom to God and God alone. But we, mu we must realize, though, get, that, get those sins controlled. Get that image of man that only Jesus can give because he is God. The image of man God wants you to be. And he did it through the cross. Please, God will, if you ask God to forgive your sins in Jesus' name, he will forgive your sins, past, present, and future, and you'll have everlasting life. And then ask God's will daily, in Jesus' name, what he wants you to do. It's so important. Do it daily, either in the morning or in the evening. If you don't know Jesus, let's, let's pray right now and, and ask Jesus for forgiveness. Now, um, somebody's been trying to contact me in North Carolina uh, and through this uh, uh, life program, um, but they won't give me your address or your name. Um, so my email is Claude Lane Nickerson at gmail.com. You can write to me. I'm not trying to ignore you. I just can't talk to you because this particular group doesn't want me to unless I pay some money. So uh, they, they, they aren't truthful when you can look up somebody's trying to contact you. It's not true, uh, in a sense, the kind of partial truth and part lie. They don't give you the name. So if you are trying to get a hold of me, uh, understand I'm not trying to ignore you in North Carolina. Uh, my email is claudelanenickerson at gmail.com, C-L-A-U-D-E. L-A-N-E-N-I-C-K-E-R-S-O-N at gmail.com and you will get me there. I'll, um, so uh, I, I, that's all I can say for that. Uh, and I know I want to say hello to my friends in the Middle East, churches in the Middle East. Uh, I will not reveal your location exactly, but I send you greetings. Uh, thank you for being faithful uh, in the ministry here and a part of the church of the church at Philadelphia in the book of Revelations. So I praise God for you. I'm pray oh, Father, I pray for that family. Oh yeah, let's 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 pray for the, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior for forgiveness sins, let's do it right now. Father God, I pray. Well, Father, let's just you you say it. Father God, repeat that. Father God, I have sinned against you. I ask you to forgive me all my sins, past, present, and future. In the name of Jesus, your Son, who is God in the one true Godhead, which the Shema says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord God is one. Three persons in the one true Godhead. In Jesus' name, amen. Please, if, if, you, have it, if you said that prayer, ask God to lead you to a Bible-believing church in your locality or if you're so inclined to to join uh join our church here you don't have aren't able to get a church home and 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 have growth uh, welcome to here uh, ask god where he wants you to be that's the best policy um i i don't care where it is if it's in a building that's fine if it's a home church that's fine but if your home church is prejudiced about churches like mine, it's on the internet, I'd stay away from them until I find a, a church that is a home church 
at a church that is uh, in a building that's amenable to our ministry in our church. Or if you can't find that, then you're welcome to, to join our church. Or uh, if, uh, you, if you come to our place of worship here on the internet, uh, you can... Yeah, I, and my assumption is if you've asked Christ to forgive your sins, past, present, and future, in the name of Jesus, you know, you know, you just, you're a member. Until, unless you say something heterodox and you don't, and and you continue to do that, um, I have to discipline you and, you know, put you on, pro, you know, put you out for, until you recant and rededicate your life to the discipleship Jesus Christ has for you, the, the image of man God wants in your life. I had a gentleman the other day, a couple, yesterday, um, who was making it complicated to do things in Jesus by ch making Jesus and the Father's name some strange uh, uh, la uh, uh, pronunciation that, uh, you know, that's not, not common to me. Uh, so as to, and then uh, uh, what what really hit me is that he called me the devil. So, um, he, and he told me at the beginning when we did this ministry what a great asset I was and you should start a church down here and all that, all that stuff. Uh, and uh, I had to, I, I warned him twice according to Peter. And he still wouldn't listen to me, so uh, I won't give him his give you his name. I've handled it. Um, sometimes that is necessary, uh, but in this case, I was led by the Holy Spirit to privately uh, kick him out until he recants. And he, he I, I'm hoping that he uh, will write to me and apologize uh, for his action. It was really hurtful because. This guy was really growing, and he turned on me, and, well, sometimes you have to do some things you don't enjoy doing, and it was, it was very painful for me getting rid of him, for now. He's always, I, I, for, I always have that forgiveness, I have the forgive. I forgive him for what he did, but I can't let it go undisciplined, or, or not disciplined. Uh, for that action and when he acknowledges it in his mind uh, by way of the Holy Spirit uh, he can come back and, and join the church and I'll just forget it ever happened that's my attitude that's what I want to do uh, when I forgive people unconditionally in that sense there's a condition of course but you can see the unconditional thing once the person recants uh, there are some things, however, where if it's sexual crime that they did to some pedophilia or something, um, I have to, uh, I, I'll have forgiveness. I have to serious prayer with God to, if, you know, he feels that they're called to a ministry. That, that has happened, and the person is genuine, 100%. I've, and it was uh, through Exodus uh, two ministries and, and the guy was straightened out and he's now a youth pastor who who knew could god all things are possible but serious serious prayer has to be done uh, and just don't let it shrug that off now the secular world has had so much tragedy in those areas they don't understand and they don't believe in god so they're, they're kind of the unforgiving mode uh, but hopefully uh, the light will shine to this individual that they can persuade even some of those. Uh, many, but few, of course, will be chosen. So, Anyways, I'm glad you uh, were watching. Again, write to me if you want. Claude Lane Nickerson at gmail.com or you can come to the church. Let's see how I say this. The Church of the Church at Philadelphia in the Book of Revelation. You, in my Facebook, you can go to, it's very simple, www.facebook.com forward slash Jesus is Lord and God. And I'll be sure you capitalize the J in Jesus, the L in Lord, 
and the G and God, and and the is I and is. <laughs> so you go to www. dot facebook. dot com forward slash Jesus with the J capitalized and the rest small letters is with the I capitalized and is and the S small. Lord capitalize the L small O R D and then I believe I capitalized and too so you capitalize A and 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 then N D in small letters and then God capitalize God and small letters for O and D so I hope that、uh, you will come and visit at me at Facebook or Blockster dot com. Where we have a church、uh, planted there at Blockster dot com, and I do my YouTube broadcasts here. Well, I'd like to thank YouTube for extending the fifteen minutes time, and I found a way with cooperation with US Stream to produce beyond fifteen minutes and make my sermons even longer. This one went about an hour, so praise God. Sometimes it'll go two hours. I don't know, whatever the Holy Spirit leads. Okay, yeah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you, and be gracious upon you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. I pray and hope you'll be blessed, so you can have a great week in Jesus Christ, who is Lord. And God, from everlasting to everlasting, hold on to your crown. Hold on to your crown. It's almost over. Hopefully, God willing, I'll see you next week at eleven o'clock for another sermon here at the Church of the Church at Philadelphia in the Book of Revelations. This is Pastor Claude Lane Nickerson. Bidding you goodbye, and God bless.